Hey, I'm Frank. My wife Janelle and I sell on eBay. Today I'm going to give you seven things that we feel you need before you start selling and shipping online. My first rule that I do want to disclaimer, I guess I'd have to say before we get into this, is if you're stumbled on this video trying to learn how to ship by selling on, from selling on eBay or any type of online platform, I highly recommend you don't just watch my video. Go watch some other content creators that have done videos like this. There are a ton of them. One person cannot tell you everything that you need to know. Everybody sells different things. Everybody ships different ways, has different ideas. Go gather up the ideas that work for you. Don't go by just us. We are not the gurus or experts of shipping and this is the exact way you should do it. We're just showing you how we do it. So the first thing you need that I'd like to talk about is an area to ship. Now, we did not just start off with a huge stainless steel table. We started off in a two bedroom townhouse on a microwave cart in our living room. <laughs> so don't get overwhelmed when you see this and say, oh man, we need to buy that freaking table. No, there's no way we're doing this. You can do this on your kitchen table. Just my biggest thing that I wanna stress is have an area to ship. Don't clear off a workbench every time you have to mail out an order. You know, you're at work, your phone cha-chings, you sold an item. All right, well, let me get all the dinner stuff off the table so I can pack my order for the next day. They have a clear area to ship. Whether it be a microwave cart you got off in a corner of your living room, which is what we did, a workbench in your garage that you designate just for shipping and you don't pile anything on, because we know how annoying that can be. You don't want to spend half an hour clearing off your area before you even ship an item. You want to put it in the box, ship it, and get on with your life. The next thing you're going to need is some kind of filling material. Whether it be bubble wrap, uh, packing paper, we buy it in bulk online through rolls because of the volume that we sell. If you're just starting out, feel free to grab whatever you can find. Just don't grab garbage. Don't ship people garbage. People bought an item from you because they see value in that item. They don't want a box of garbage. Whether it be food wrappers or whatever other junk you find laying around the house. I mean, if you want to use some recycled paper from something, you know, maybe some white paper that you're going to throw in the recycle bin anyway and you want to use it for filling material, go for it. Obviously, this all depends on what you're selling. If you're selling breakables, you're probably going to have a lot of bubble wrap. If you're selling plush, like my wife sells a lot of, I don't really need a lot of bubble wrap to do that. I'll just throw a little packing paper in to fill the box up. If you have listings online that you're selling now, you should have everything you need to ship that item in a moment's notice when it's sold. That's what makes it easy for you. So the next thing I want to talk about are boxes. Have boxes ready to go. I can't tell you what size boxes for you to get because I don't know what you're selling. That depends up to you. And this goes back to also watching a lot of other videos on shipping. See what other people are using. See what boxes they're using. The key is don't spend a lot on boxes. You can get them free if you want, if you're small. Don't go buy in two, three dollar a piece boxes unless you're selling that high dollar of an item to cover that cost. You're going to need plain brown boxes to ship your first class orders, which are under a pound, and if you choose to ship internationally, because it's first class international, which are also plain brown boxes, and any media mail you're going to ship is going to be in a plain brown box. You're going to need some. And like I said, your UPS orders as well. Don't bring a USPS box into UPS. We generally order our boxes for first class and international orders only on Uline, and we buy in bulk. That's just where we get them. I'm sure you can probably get it cheaper. Go get them cheaper if you can. And if you do find them cheaper, let me know. The key is cheaper and showing up just as fast though. If you're only really shipping a few things a week, just go to Walmart, grab some boxes or you know, around wherever you work maybe, dumpsters, you can find. Just like I said, go back to my original point. Make sure you have the boxes ready to go though. Don't get them after you sell the item. You already know you're gonna be shipping it because it's listed, so it's gonna be selling. So make sure you have a box to fit that item in. Big, small, whatever shape, size it is, you should already know what box that sucker's going in before it sells. If you're shipping USPS priority, you should not be paying for boxes. You can get them from free on the USPS website. These are the boxes that we use. As you can see, I got them set up underneath our shipping station ready to go. We have a lot larger stock of boxes in our basement that I keep and then I replenish this stock. But generally we keep Number seven boxes, which are your 12 by 12 by nine, I think, size boxes, is the biggest USPS box you can get, I believe. That's this box here that I'm sure you've seen in uh, some of my other videos from what sold videos. So we have that box that we keep. 
Uh, we'll keep a bunch of flat boxes, the 1095s and 1097s. They make another box a little bit bigger than this, and you can connect the two. That's for a whole other video. We're not going to get into that. And then we also keep shoe boxes, which these are awesome for plush. If someone's buying a $50 plush, they don't want to get it in a poly bag. They spend $50 on it. Throw, throw it in a box, and it's free too. It doesn't cost any more to ship it if you're shipping USPS. So, uh, But yeah, we use a lot of these. And we also keep and use a lot of these, uh, the 8 by 8 by 8 USPS boxes. That's another good box to have. But like I said, though, you get what works for you on what you sell. But I do highly recommend get USPS boxes because you're probably most likely going to be shipping a lot of your items priority. And these are free. So order 100 of them. Order 100 of each and keep them stuffed in your garage somewhere ready to go. So I hit this already again, and I'm going to hit it again because it's very important. Have the box ready to ship in while it's listed, when it's listed. It is a nightmare to find a box for a large item that you got to ship out the next day that you don't have. So the next thing you're going to need is packaging tape. Get packaging tape. Did you, if you didn't hear me again, get packaging tape. Don't use scotch tape. Don't use duct tape. Don't use electrical tape or any other type of tapes you might find. Use packaging tape. It's made for packaging. It sticks to the cardboard. It doesn't come off. And get good packaging tape. Don't get the dollar store packaging tape. It gets caught in the post office machines, rips off, and then your package is lost and never to be seen again. Oh my gosh, I want to quit eBay. My packages are always turning up lost. I can't believe the post office just keeps losing my packages. Well, pack it right and it'll probably get there where it needs to get to A-OK. -okay. So, Again, we buy packaging tape in bulk like we do our boxes. I order a case of it just because I don't like reordering stuff every month. I, we order it maybe a couple times a year, a couple cases, and we got it. You can get this stuff at Office Max or wherever you can find it. Pay about $2 a roll if you're not buying in bulk, so expect to pay about that much. And then you're going to need a tape gun and or a desktop dispenser, which a uh, tabletop dispenser, I don't know what you call it. Um, some people like either or or both. I find a use for both, so we use both. Generally, you're going to want to get the two inch tape. You can get three inch if you like, it's all preference. You know, a little wider, you don't got to double it up. The, the fifth thing you're going to need for shipping and selling online is a box cutter. Just a plain old knife will do. If you want, you can order a box resizing tool as well. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. Um, Shed Flips, another YouTube channel. He sells them on uh, his channel, I believe he's got a website. But a plain knife will do just as fine with a good blade. Make sure it's a sharp blade too. If it's not sharp, you're going to tear up your boxes. You're going to have a bad day. So get yourself a nice knife, good sharp knife. Uh, it helps in resizing, cutting flaps, cutting uh, just cutting anything, obviously. So the sixth thing you're going to need, which is a workstation, which actually includes a couple different things. It could be a computer laptop of some sort, which I would assume you already have because you're getting onto eBay to list your items. But you're also going to need it to purchase your shipping labels online. And then you're going to need a printer. I recommend a label printer, uh, whether it's Rolo, Dymo, whatever. There's uh, two camps. People fight over which one's better. They're all good. It's just get a good label printer. They're fairly expensive, but you don't need to start with a label printer. If you're only shipping a couple things a week, you can certainly get a regular printer inkjet, laser printer, whatever you happen to already have, print your labels on a regular sheet of paper and cut out your labels and tape them to your box with your packaging tape. But obviously if you start doing more volume and wanting to be a little quicker, you can certainly invest in the label printer. And then the last thing you're going to need is a scale and measuring tape. You're obviously going to need to weigh your boxes so you know what rate to ship them out at. When you type in your labels, you got to type in the weight, and that's determined by how much you're going to pay for that label. So you're going to need a scale, and then you're also going to need a measuring tape to measure your package to make sure it's under a certain size, or if it's over a certain size and you got to pay a dimensional weight, you got to be able to put in the dimensions of your package. So if this video helped you out at all, give it the old thumbs up. If you uh, enjoy watching people sell things on eBay, and see what they sell and how they sell it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and check out some of our other videos.